everyone, welcome back to Stars and Startups with me, your host, Varun Bhumidi. On this episode, we're going to chat with Sarvesh Sashi, a talented cricketer who was once drafted in the IPL. Yep, he put his IPL fame aside to pursue his love for yoga. He founded Sarva, an app that is bringing yoga to the world and has a star-studded investor list, including celebrities like Jennifer Lopez and her husband, baseball legend, Alex Rodriguez. We get chatting about yoga, of course, and a lot, lot more. Okay, let's get on with this episode. Uh, today we have a very special guest. Uh, we have Sarvesh of Sarva. And uh, we both are from Chennai, but we've actually never met. But looks like he knows a lot of my family members. But before we get into it, uh, Sarvesh, you got to tell me, uh, you're quite young when you started Sarva. And, you know, uh, I-, I think the other business, uh, Zorba. Uh, from what I can see. How did this all come together? Were you like already enlightened when you were in school and college, which you like, you know, once I graduate, I got to do this or how did this all come together? So I kind of describe my life into two parts. One is a life before 17 and the other is a life after 17. Uh, a lot of people have, would have heard this story many times, but I'm, I always love saying it because people who haven't heard it, uh, it, I feel that it's it's great for them uh, and it kind of becomes an inspiration of sorts for them. But people who've heard it, they tend to hear it again. So thanks for that. So uh, before 17, I described my life with the three A's, which is arrogance, attitude and anger. I was fortunate enough to be born in a well-off family. Dad runs 17 different companies, first generation entrepreneur. As a six-year-old child, like every little Indian boy, uh, my only aim was to play cricket for uh, the country. <laughs> Excuse me. Don't worry, it's nothing. <laughs> so, um, uh, play cricket for the country and win the World Cup. That was my entire aim. So, my parents thought that putting me into a yoga class would help me balance and focus better. And they put me into a yoga class. Started yoga at the age of six. Uh, did yoga for about, uh, I'd say, for a really long time. till I was about 17. 17, I met my teacher and who I later on started calling my Guruji. Where... Uh, what do you say? My father paid a lot of money up front to this teacher. Couldn't complete his class. He said, Sarvesh, why don't you just get done with it? I said, great, no problem. Uh, when I went in, he had long hair, long beard, orange clothes. I'm like, okay, he's going to be another godman asking you to follow his feet. He'll show me a halo of light around my head and stuff. But fortunately, the first thing he told me about consciousness or opening of the third eye because I thought if I open my third eye, I'll play for India pastor. So, uh, some magic karke. but uh, he said if you ever think I can enlighten you you are a fool and I'm a bigger fool that hit me quite hard I'm like wow this guy is being really honest I really like him so I said I went to my dad and I said can I continue his class he said yes I started the yoga and mindfulness journey did it for a really long time did a lot of sadhanas 10 days 11 days 40 days being the maximum I've gone silence for 10 days I've gone completely mon breath for 40 days no music, no phones, no TV, no friends, nothing at all. Just sit in a room, meditate for six hours, sit in a room, meditate for nine hours a day, etc., etc. So that's why I was telling you earlier, the lockdown is not very tough for me. Um, I think it's, uh, it's uh, when you're lonely, two things happen. Either you identify yourself or you live in denial and you don't want to know your true self, right? So when I was 18, my teacher came and told me, listen, you're doing great sadhanas. I want you to follow five things in life. Will you follow it? I asked him what? He said, no intoxication. That's no alcohol, no smoking, no non-veg. Uh, non-violence through actions, thoughts and words. No lying. Completely no lying. If I'm late because I overslept, I'm late because I overslept. Not because there was traffic on the road. Fourth one was no mental and physical stealing. Fifth one was celibacy. I assumed all of this was for 40 days. And uh, I rhetorically told my teacher that uh, I'll probably kind of do it for 40 days but my teacher told me it's not for 40 days but for seven years i'm like wait 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 i mean seven years you mean uh my prime time if not all to clearly do a couple of things he said the prime time to go inward so i started it uh, at the age of 18 i'm 28 now it's been 10 years i've not broken any of it uh when i was 21 my dad wanted me to get into his business i tried going wasn't really uh able to do it because by then I was wanting to do stuff that were purposeful in nature and that made a difference in people's lives. And 
dad's one of the businesses was schools but it was in kerala and i never were willing to shift to kerala so i said um, well great so the best reason to give him for not getting into his business was tell him i'm starting my own and i said wait yoga changed my life let's bring yoga to the world there are 500 million people in india under the age of 35 stress anxiety depression loneliness is becoming a global epidemic i think yoga can change that life and uh, so yeah at 21 uh, college dropout i wrote in my law law college exam that please pass me i'll make the country proud and i'll make the college proud as well but no i failed in that exam too uh, but yes i think uh, loyla recently gave me the best alumni award uh, it was funny but you have an award think, uh, some I award i i recently i recently got on email uh, recently maybe not this year last year sometime over because uh, when when yeah, uh, that's we the, that's the journey there in terms of starting the business when when i was in uh, loyla Uh, i think they had the star of loyla award right uh, <laughs> that's the last thing i remember of of loyla giving anybody any awards awards um, okay <laughs> um so in this uh, journey when you started out like was the reason to start or you know your parents wanting you to at least try yoga uh, the intent was what was it to to find a peace was it to you know uh, no, no. it it was purely physical in nature which will help me uh, kind of balance in terms of my body flexibility all of that and uh, but always what happens is when you know your body right when you know what you're knowing about your body how is it moving where is it tight where is it paining etc you tend to start being aware and being in the present which then which largely happens because of pranayama meditation and all of that so all of that became a kind of a later on uh, i would say finding but the reason my parents put me into a yoga class was to help me balance and be flexible and injury free because i was playing professional cricket for a really long time so i traveled i didn't sign for them but i traveled along with two ipl teams for 3 years rajasthan royals and cochin tigers i also captain loyola college so um, i played decent amount of cricket so just to be completely flexible be uh injury free etc my that's why they put me on try yoga class that's interesting because i've seen um you know cricket like i think post the saurav ganguly era or during the saurav ganguly era where uh, i believe bks uh, uh you know had worked with the team uh to improve uh you know the flexibility and, and even reduce injuries was was that the case like um has has cricket actually adopted yoga to that extent yeah yeah indian team has a yoga therapist which who uh, uh, who travels along with them completely wherever they go so i think yoga meditation is a very big part of uh, i think all competitive sports uh you know uh, djokovic really gives it to yoga chris gail gave his entire thing to yoga uh credits to yoga there are many many people who kind of keep speaking about what yoga and meditation has genuinely done to their i would say awareness being in the present uh because you know competitive when you go from point a to point b in sport when you're going professional competitive when there is crowd when there is a lot more pressure the only thing that you can do is to remain in the present and be calm for your performance levels to increase really really high so otherwise it's difficult because if you're thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow or next your performance level is never at its peak do, do they spend a lot of time on just improving uh, focus uh, with using yoga or is it both physical and mental uh, aspects of yoga that gets used in in sport well i think it's uh, both physical and mental aspects of yoga that gets used in sport i mean i think the physical aspects of it is to gain flexibility uh, be mobility uh, and kind of venture that you know you're strong as well because a lot of um, uh, asanas that you need to do you need to hold it with your breath etc so it also improves stamina and strength and but also majorly the focus and the balance and the awareness mindfulness part of it too that also is supremely supremely uh kind of uh built into every competitive sport when they do yoga did, did you did you ever watch that uh, netflix documentary 
Uh, I did. <laughs> what did you think about uh, you know how they painted? Uh, well, I I honestly I, I honestly wouldn't want to comment anything because I don't know him personally. Obviously, I don't know anything that is there. All I know is towards the end of the documentary, he announced another BKS Iyengar workshop and uh, uh, sorry. Um, my apologies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, workshop. Uh, Bikram, Bikram Yoga Bikram. workshop. Yeah. We, I think we should have started with that. We should have yeah, started by yeah. saying, did you see Bikram? As, as yeah, because you spoke about BKS Iyengar yeah. earlier. So yeah, I think he's, uh, I think what BKS Iyengar has done from the whole therapeutic angle of yoga is phenomenal. But uh, yeah, coming to Bikram's documentary, I don't know what to comment. I wouldn't want to comment because uh, yes, it is whatever we see, right? Whether it was a Bikram, uh, Bikram's documentary, Osho's documentary, etc., it's what we see. That's all wild, wild country as well. But I think uh, uh, all I know is towards the end of that documentary of Bikram, uh, at the end of the uh, documentary, when he announces his uh, workshop, there is still some hundred people are joining. So I don't know. Right? Well, so, I mean, to 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 give him credit. Uh, you know, Bikram did make it uh, an opportunity for people to do what they love, yet uh, be able to earn from that, uh, you know, to make it an entrepreneurial uh, venture. Uh, but I, I think another piece is uh, whatever he said and did, uh, he took yoga to the world to a large extent because, uh, you know, if when I was in the US in 2008 to, to 11, uh, I would have friends talk about hot yoga, hot yoga, right? Uh, they'd be like, hey, would you like to come with me? Because I'm the Indian friend that they had. They'd be like, let's go to the studio. And I'd be like, I actually don't follow, because I, at that time, I wasn't into yoga, right? And I would have a joke. I would say, would you ask every Chinese person to do, you know, uh, ka, you know Kung Fu or uh, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, that would be my response uh, to, to that but you know uh, but it did bring yoga to the forefront in front of a larger audience and uh, you know and I think that started in that 80s uh, and the 90s which we're seeing you know more people accept yoga uh, even even in this country is that what you're seeing as well? Yeah, I think uh, our Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji has obviously made June 21st his International Yoga Day. 177 countries have kind of signed that pact or however we want to call it. And they celebrate International Yoga Day. So I think it is gaining great importance, which as a holistic well-being practice, not just as a one-hour practice, but as a holistic well-being practice. And um, uh, let's see. I mean, I think the importance of yoga is still not fully, uh, they know about it, but they don't kind of, you know, do it. They don't, it's, they don't practice what people are preaching. Yeah. But I think what's important is going to be practice. So when you did start off, uh, you know, I, I saw that you have 25 different types of, of yoga. Etc. Actually, what is uh, Zorba? What is Sarva? I think our audience would love to understand what you do. Well, Zorba was what the company was called earlier. Uh, and we changed that name into Sarva because we wanted to be more Indian, etc. And obviously, uh, of course, the creative agency who came up with the name said Sarva comes from my name too. So it kind of all fits in well because in Sanskrit, Sarva means all. And we kept saying that we're all about modernity, authenticity, and making that accessible. So the 25 forms of yoga was to ensure that yoga was authentic but yet cool, modern yet contemporary, accessible yet transformative. So that was the approach that we were taking largely. And we said, great, we needed to have a variety of classes across our studios. So we trained people in it. We had great training programs, trained everybody. So because of these 25 forms of yoga, our average age dropped from 46 to 31. So we started getting youngsters more involved and so on and so forth. So, so you've seen the the type of uh, audience that embraces yoga change over the last, you know, ten years uh, or so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've seen that drastically change over the last three years, and certainly la la largely changed over the last two months also. Post lockdown, 
we are seeing why men are actually coming to our platform why women are coming to our platform what age group of women are coming to our platform uh, what's the percentage mix why are they coming what is their content consumption looking like and so on i i want to get into uh, post lockdown just a little bit later uh, but but i think i'm i'm curious about how uh, the perception of yoga has also changed right uh, i think uh, yoga had multiple misconceptions or mix if i may so call it yoga is boring yoga is only for older people yoga is only for women you can't lose weight through yoga etc i think we've pretty much broken all of it like uh, right from um, having it only being only a women driven thing to uh, older people thing to people not having losing weight losing weight we've broken all of it and we're fortunate to have done that because i don't think today when people do talk about a commercial yoga space uh, sarva does come in top of their mind at some level especially in the cities we are in uh, but i think there's a long way to go uh, uh, i believe that our vision of connecting 7 billion breaths is only just started right now and it's become all the more relevant uh, right now i've seen a lot of uh, yogic practices focus on improving uh, their life uh, even if they are you know ailing from certain diseases right uh, there's prescriptive and then there's therapeutic uh, so if you're looking at from a prescript prescriptive standpoint uh, are more people finding solace in yoga and is that resulting i mean is this true because i always i wasn't sure because you know you can always claim that something yeah, does something a lot of hospitals globally i don't know many in india but globally have that post surgery therapies or uh, uh if i may so call it whether you want to call it therapies whether you want to call it post surgery uh, uh mechanisms of uh, uh, recovery is yoga practices breathing exercises for people who uh, come out of a heart surgery um, a lot of ex- movements and joint movements of people who come out of a knee surgery and many many breathing practices are evolving as recovery mechanisms of various injuries as well so one is prescriptive and the second like you said is therapeutic i think yoga is also largely seen as preventive too in terms of ensuring that you improve your immunity you improve your lung capacity you improve your digestion by doing kapalabhatis and kriyas and many more practices that way will largely result in your body becoming better uh your body becoming much more flexible and in turn helping a lot in your mind as well if that is true and and you know it does improve a uh, life outcomes right uh people should be having i mean everybody should be doing it very differently and and you know to your point how the consumption and and you know the perception uh, are more people having such conversations now yeah yeah i mean i think mental health as a as as a conversation or a topic has been spoken much 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 more that uh, in india than it's ever been before thanks to a lot of people whether it's bollywood whether it's business entrepreneurs whether it's normal people general public etc i think it's fantastic that they've spoken and which kind of increases the importance of accepting if there is any kind of mental health problem it's not wrong i mean you somebody having uh, being depressed or having anxiety is not there's there's no harm in it right you have it accept it embrace it and once you accept it there's always multiple ways to take care of it as well but unless you accept it you're not going to be taking care of it at all in the recent past um, i've seen a lot more conversation about doing yoga uh, online like i at you know, your your erstwhile competitor Uh, or you know kyofit has probably kind of taken it to a very large uh, audience uh, how are you guys different uh, is it you know what is the the business today of sarva well uh, business today and every day has always been uh, we're a wellness ecosystem that's based on the foundation of yoga our foundation will remain yoga we have two platforms a physical platform brick and mortar a digital platform uh obviously now the brick and mortar platform is fairly closed our digital platform we launched on march 21st 
and we are already at over 1 lakh 30 thousand users oh wow so, it is very recent yeah march 21st in about 75 days from march 21st so it's been quite amazing in terms of how uh, we've been able to kind of get these users on board it's been uh, encouraging for us and i think yourfit is uh, doing a fantastic job in actually getting people to work out from home because i always believe in the business of wellness more the merrier so there's no competition or whatever i think uh, more the merrier in the space people need to come out and just be very authentic in what they're doing uh, yes being a capitalist is again not wrong no harm in making money there's absolutely there's nothing wrong in that at all but genuinely feel uh, that you want to make a difference in someone's life because there are a lot of lives out there who are not happy uh, whether it's physically or mentally in the uh, current scenario are you do you think uh, you know there is more need uh, for online dissemination of the practice because i i feel like distancing etc will keep people away from uh, well i see uh, honestly we're on 4 billion people who use smartphones globally i think right i mean i may be here and there with the numbers but not too far off so i think there is going to be an opportunity for many people the total addressable market still remains extremely open for many many fitness players out there many wellness players out there many mental health players out there but we've been fortunate to have the uh, ability to have actually been there in the whole yoga space from a fairly decent amount of time and have impacted a fairly de- decent amount of lives so far recently you launched uh, an app with uh, with a celebrity um, is was that the plan all along where you need our people of hey guys are you enjoying the podcast do you want to keep updated when i release new episodes don't forget to subscribe to this channel wherever you're listening to this podcast and also do leave an email on stars.substack.com so that i inform you on email when a new episode drops okay back to the show we have, a, we have many celebrity investors uh, uh, and sarva has another platform called diva yoga as well so both for sarva and diva yoga we have a i mean my co-founder um, and she thinks uh, she's from a very creative angle is malika arora and we we sarva launched its app basically it was not an app launched for a celebrity okay so malika okay. and i together launched the app okay understood because uh, actually i think that was what i was referring to uh, yeah because uh, i know that uh, shilpa shetty has her own app uh you know which which is is done by another company um and this seems you know like i think rithik roshan launched his workout program there seems to be a trend where you know uh, they using this a channel not only showcase uh you know the craft of doing yeah i think i think this will only increase if not reduce and increase drastically that all the celebrities will start wanting to get involved uh with companies in the whole health and wellness space etc because they do realize that the potential of this is going to be significantly high and they will want to get trusted people that they are close to that they are aware of to kind of be and be a part of this whole uh health and wellness ecosystem because from a, a global standpoint a lot of celebrities do partake in uh in not only investing in tech but also you know having their own uh, channels to uh you know share you know some of the things that they love right because they're saying okay i have my celebdom in music and uh movies and in sports etc et but now how can i make smart investments uh in spaces that i enjoy i i think uh, globally people are slightly more the the celebrity circle is slightly more evolved in the concept of investing uh and business i think here they are still considered as talents and artists etc they do have a lot of companies who manage them legal people who manage them but i think the structure of equity of investing etc is still not among celebrities is still not really high in india yes many people do say we have pioneered that because we have malika arora shahid kapoor meera kapoor aishwarya danosh jennifer lopez alex rodriguez uh we have a cricketer who's confidential 
and uh, so on and so forth. So I think we have uh, kind of uh, won that trust that is not very easily winnable, if I may so for you, if there is a word like that exists. Wait, so tell before we move on, you need to tell me how did you get, uh, you know, Rodriguez and Lopez to invest? Uh, how did that happen? So uh, we, I got introduced to somebody called David Giampaolo, who is known as the most networked man in Great Britain. And through him, uh, I got introduced to a guy called Mark Mastro, who is known as the Steve Jobs of Fitness, who owned 24 Hour Fitness in US. He's the owner of 24 Hour Fitness, Yoga Works, etc. He sold them, obviously. Uh, he's very close to Alex and Jennifer. And he introduced us to them. And then we went and pitched and etc. And then they loved what we were doing. I hope so. And hence they invested. I mean, Arod is is uh, prolific, right? I mean, he's got uh, you know he's got quite a few uh, fitness businesses himself. Uh, I don't know about Jennifer Lopez. I guess they uh, you know invest together in any case. Uh, but but I'm I'm curious. So does this mean? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you have global ambitions because you said four billion users across the world. Uh, but will this mean low, uh, Jennifer also doing uh, classes like Malaika Aurora, putting out content? What? You never know. You never know. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Uh, <laughs> you never know. Okay, you're, you're, you're keeping quiet on this topic. So I, I'm not going to... I would, uh, like, I would like to remain quiet on this topic. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll assume the best in this scenario. Um, yeah, I'll so, so uh, what is global? Because I, I know that you have launched a few studios uh, in London, uh, etc. And and you know, uh, of course, yeah. Right now, digital. See, digitally, we are available in hundred countries. So our users are from pretty much many places. Obviously, largely UK, US, and Singapore. But uh, we're getting a we're getting a, a, a decent amount of users from all these locations. So let's hopefully see how this kind of pans out because I think it's way way too early. We're only uh, seventy five days old, and let's hopefully see where this kind of takes us through and how it takes us through, etc. But prior to launching this online venture, um, I believe you were looking at um, a you know asset light model where you're working with uh, an OYO. To kind of launch the studios there, uh, does that continue uh, as as the no. plan of plan for the future? No, no, no. It was a it, yeah. It was a it was a, a call that we took that we don't uh, want to be in places where we can't control the experiences, and uh, I think it was a it was a good uh, good kind of uh, quick uh, test that we did. And we said that I think it's better off to just be standalone on our own. And uh, obviously now standalone also, we're, we're figuring out what's the best way, what's the best mechanism to kind of do that. Because I think running studios is, a, is its own beast, right? Because you got to, it's manpower, it's, you know, it's managing people, it's managing slots, it's managing, you know, right now you probably have to manage cleanliness and hygiene. Yeah. Uh, is it because of that, that overhead um, you're, you're like, you know what, maybe not, this is not the greatest direction to, to bring holistic wellness to millions of people. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I think um, a brick and mortar, like you said, is a different animal altogether. And now our entire bandwidth management effort focus is going to go on the digital business completely. And we're seeing some great traction there. So we would continue to kind of keep investing a lot of our time, money, efforts, the marketing, etc. only on the digital uh, business. So I've been curious, you know, about the space in general. So I'd, I'd always tested different ones. And one of the most common uh, applications are the ones where they show you certain asanas. This is how you do it. This is how you do something, right? And it's it's not interactive, right? Because it's, it's a one-sided kind of information. And, you know, it's normally like, it's just this asana that you can do, right? It's not like why you should do it, how you should do it, how do you breathe? I think there are a lot more aspects to yoga than just, you know, doing the asana, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there are many, many more aspects to yoga than doing the asanas because uh, it's about personal connection. It's about community feeling. It's about interactivity. It's about checking your breathing and all of that. So that's why we've launched our live classes 
which is interactive as much as it can get. And of course, we're launching our one-to-one as well, which is again in the best way possible, or we're ensuring that uh, feedback happens. When when we get into, uh, and I'm guessing that's more therapeutic, right? Because a prescriptor will then become, uh, you know, because you need a lot more involved, uh, you know, practice. Uh, I need to understand what a Varun needs. And, and you know... Uh, yeah, you will then take the one-on-one classes. Right, so so it will be enabled to, to be able to deliver that kind of an experience for them. Uh, Correct. That That's right. That's right. Right. Um, from a from a app experience standpoint, you've seen you know a massive growth in the seventy five days, um, right? And are there any trends that are emerging from that? Well, many trends, honestly, because we're try- we're seeing that a lot of people are uh, when well, we're seeing a significant amount of female consumption on weight loss, male consumption on guided meditation and stress. So these two are the consumptions that we are seeing. It's phenomenal in terms of how uh, it's kind of getting consumed, whether it's male and female, uh, that females are still working on the body, the kind of, because I think uh, female, according to my Guruji, are much more mentally stronger than men. And I do fully, fully believe. So I think from a, uh, from a mindfulness standpoint, they are in a certain space. And I think men, because they're locked down at home and not able to do anything at all, and or rather minimal movement, etc., they are trying to get better sleep, better posture, anxiety, etc., etc. From a India standpoint, you know, I, I, some of the things I've talked to with with quite a few of my, uh, you know, kind of guests is how you think about Bharat, right? Because if you look at, you know, I mean, this is. Uh, Local for local. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how do you want to call it, right? I mean, you're living in Bombay now. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you speak uh, you know, Hindi more often than, than say you were in Chennai. Um, and, you know, I mean, we know this uh, when we talk to the common person, they're more comfortable in their own language, uh, etc. If you want to get to this audience, um, are you looking at creating content that's specifically for them? How, how are you looking at that? Uh, you know, kind of playing out because I mean, global going global would mean going local as well. Yeah, I think we've always been a, a global company. Let me put it that way, right? Uh, where India, yoga is India. We want to bring the voice of yoga to the world and from India. That's always been our uh, kind of brand value proposition because we're saying we are authentic, but we are modern and we make it accessible. So I think Bharat vocal for local, all of it will come into picture and we will tend to do really well in terms of uh, when we go abroad and we've seen great traction there as well. Do you do you have a yoga voice? Ding. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hi Varun, how are you doing? Hi Varun, how are you doing? Okay. No, no, no. I have only one voice. Yeah. <laughs> but I know the yoga voice. They, they always change the way you uh, count down. Inhale. Yeah. Yeah. And exhale. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it always try, try to be soothing and calming, and you know, but but also, yeah. I found it extremely annoying. <laughs> um, mentioned uh, the the ministry uh, and the government uh, a little bit in terms of how they're focused on uh, you know yoga and having the yoga day, etc. Uh, are there opportunities to work with the ministry to? To, to yeah, so I, I was I was a part two years or three years ago. I was a part of the ministry. I was on the cover of the ministry's not the cover cover but inside cover of the ministry's book, which released about yoga. And we we used to do some work with them. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of opportunities. I think there are over one lakh. Uh, uh, we heard that there over there's a shortage of over one lakh yoga instructors, and we would love to kind of give them all an opportunity. To how do they go online? How can they train better? How can they speak online? What are the job opportunities that they can get from home? So on and so forth. So, so there is an opportunity to also skill more people to become. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because I think one of the challenges that you know uh, I had seen earlier was uh, everybody wanted to do yoga at five a.m. Right, six a.m. At 
at, at, at a certain time of day, uh, right? 5 a.m., 6 a.m. So you can't have an instructor in your house right? <laughs> at, at 6 a.m. And, and not 10 of them cannot have the same instructor, right? So good instructors will not, you know, uh, want to come. And, and I'm guessing Zoom will probably solve for a lot of those challenges now. Um, but uh, you're right. I think one lakh instructors, and, and then you can probably solve for your local, uh, you know, content creation as well uh, from that standpoint, or or you know, give them an opportunity uh, to to run this. Um, hey, Savage, this has been awesome. Uh, you know, Thank you so much, Arun. Thank you for having me. Truly appreciate your time. Keep the world healthy. Uh, and next uh, time, ne- next time you uh, see A-Rod, say hi. Uh, from absolutely. My side. I'll, do, I'll do that. For sure. Hey guys, that's the end of another episode. Thanks for listening to the show. Subscribe and get intimated whenever we launch a new episode. Tweet at me at Varun Vumidi on Twitter. And of course, I strongly urge you to get on our newsletter at stars.substack.com. Okay, I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.